Hello Design Cutters! Renee here with an Illustrator-based tutorial for a modern masquerade ball flyer. We'll create our layout using awesome fonts and ornaments, plus Illustrator tools like the Pattern Creator and Libraries. Follow along by downloading the freebie pack at designcuts.com. Open Illustrator and go to File New. Name your file. Then enter a width of 8.5 inches and a height of 11 inches. Under Bleed, make sure the link icon on the far right is selected to apply the input to all four sides and enter a top bleed of 0.125 inches. Then press OK. At the bottom of the Layers palette, double click the name of the layer, Layer 1, and change it to Background. Click on the foreground color swatch at the bottom of your toolbar and in the color picker, enter CMYK values of 60, 100, 22, 70, then press OK. Open the Swatches palette and click the new swatch icon. Name the swatch dark purple and click OK. Now select your rectangle tool. Click once on the artboard. In the dialog pop-up box, enter a width of 8.75 inches and a height of 11.25 inches, then click OK. To center the rectangle on the artboard, open your Align palette and under Align Objects, select the icons for Horizontal Align Center and Vertical Align Center. Now select your Type tool and click once on the artboard. Type a lowercase v. In your Character palette, change the font to Ink Heart Patterns and the size to 400 point. Next, we'll go to Type Create Outlines. If you haven't yet purchased the collection, you can find this in the Freebies folder. Open your color palette and change the CMYK build to 60, 100, 22, 80. The difference between the background and pattern will be subtle, but we'll create more contrast later. Now we'll create a repeating pattern. Go to Object Pattern Make. In the Pattern Editor that pops up, name the pattern Purple X's, and then at the top of the file, click Done. If you take a look at your Swatches palette, you'll see that the new swatch has been added, so you can delete our original vector. Select the solid purple background and press Command-C to copy, then Command-F to paste in place. With the copy still selected, choose the new pattern in the Swatches palette. Now we'll lock this layer. In the Layers palette, click the Create New Layer icon, double-click the layer name and change it to Border. Select your Type tool and click once on the artboard. Type a number 2. In your Character palette, change the font to Micro Brew Soft Ornaments and the size to 200 point. Again, this is also in the Freebies folder if you don't have the fonts yet. And then again, we'll go to Type Create Outlines. With the corner still selected, open your color palette and change the CMYK build to 0, 95, 20, 0. We'll position this in the bottom left of the artboard about a half inch from both the left side and bottom. I'm going to use my Transform palette to get my positioning accurate. Now go to Object, Transform, Reflect. Choose Vertical and press Copy. Hold Shift and use your selection tool to drag the copy to the right until it's about a half inch from the right side of the artboard. Again, I'll use my Transform palette for accuracy. And just remember that holding Shift when you move objects will ensure that the object moves along the nearest 45 degree angle. To make sure both corners are centered on the artboard, select both, press Command G to group them, then open your Align palette and select the icon for Horizontal Align Center. With both corners still selected, go to Object Transform Reflect. 
This time choose horizontal and press copy. Hold shift while dragging the copies up until they're about a half inch from the top of the artboard. To ensure all four corners are centered, select both groups, press command G to group them again, and then in your align palette select the icons for both horizontal align center and vertical align center. Next up, we'll add a few dotted lines to finish out our border. Select your pen tool, click once just above the top end of the corner piece, hold shift, and click again about an inch higher to create a second point. At the bottom of your toolbar, you'll see that the fill color of the line is currently the same pink as the corner. Click the little double-ended arrow just to the top right of the fill stroke icons on the toolbar to toggle so the fill color is now none and the stroke is pink. Open your stroke palette and increase the weight to three point. Next to cap, choose the middle icon for a round cap. Click the box next to dash line and change the dash to zero point and the gap to 12 point. And that's how you make an easy dotted line in Illustrator. Switch to your selection tool. Hold down Option plus Shift, then click and drag the line to the right to create a copy. Position the copy above the bottom right corner. Let's draw one more dotted line between the two bottom corners. Select your pen tool again and click once about a half inch to the right of the rightmost end of the left corner, then hold shift and click again about a half inch from the other corner. Then go to your align palette and click the horizontal align center icon. Make sure to click off the line and reselect with the selection tool, otherwise you'll be centering your last point, not the whole line. Select all three dotted lines by holding shift and clicking on them with the selection tool, and press command G to group. Go to Object, Transform, Reflect. Choose Horizontal and press Copy. Use your selection tool while holding Shift to drag the copies up to the same relative position at the top of the artboard. Now we'll lock this layer. In the Layers palette, click the Create New Layer icon, double-click the layer name, and change it to Title Art. Navigate to the Cheers vector file and open it in Illustrator. Select the mask and press Command C to copy. Then paste it into the main layout file using Command V. Go to Object, Transform, Scale, and enter a uniform scale of 210%, then press OK. Now, go to Object Transform Rotate. In the dialog box, enter a rotation of 8 degrees and press OK. Position the mask towards the top left of the artboard. Open your color palette and change the fill color of the mask to 100, 0, 31, 0. Now let's go ahead and get our main title in before we make any more decisions on our mask. Select your type tool and click once on the artboard. Type Masquerade. In your character palette, change the font to Cheers Regular at 140 point. And then we'll change the fill color to white. Next, go to Effect Warp Arc. Enter a horizontal arc of 15% and press OK. Position the word Masquerade just below the mask. Now we'll add a little rotation to mimic the angle of the mask. Go to Object Transform Rotate. When the box opens, just press OK since our previous settings should already be in place. Select your type tool again. Click once on the artboard under and slightly to the right of Masquerade and type Ball. Your font should already be correct, so just change the fill color to white. Next, we'll add a little ornament to the front of the word ball, since it's so much shorter than Masquerade, and it'll help add some balance. Use your type tool to click once and place the cursor before the B in ball. Open your glyphs palette, scroll down until you see this little ornament, and double click to add it. Select 
Switch to your selection tool, then go to Effect Warp Arc. We should still have 15% horizontal arc set, so just press OK. Next, go to Object Transform Rotate. This time enter a rotation of negative 8 degrees and press OK. I want to add a handle to the mask that kind of follows the line of the M, so I'm going to fiddle with the positioning a little bit to make room for it. So now we can add our handle to the mask. Grab your pen tool, click once just to the left of the top of the mask for your first point. Click again at the bottom of the artboard just left of center so the path follows the right leg of the M in Masquerade. Use your eyedropper tool to sample the teal of the mask, then click the double headed arrow above the fill stroke on your toolbar to toggle the teal from fill to stroke. Open your stroke palette and increase the weight to 8 points. At the bottom, next to Profile, choose Width Profile 2. Obviously we don't want our mask handle running right through the M, so we'll cut a little piece out. With your pen tool, click once on the handle just above the M in Masquerade and once just below it. Switch to your Direct Selection tool, click on a blank space so nothing's selected, then click once on the line segment between the two points we've just made, and press Delete. Go back to the Cheers Vector file and copy the ornament using Command-C. Paste it into the main layout file with Command V. Drag the ornament to the top left where the mask meets the handle. Go to Object Transform Rotate and enter a rotation of 76 degrees, then click OK. Use the eyedropper tool to sample the hot pink color from the corner piece. With the Group Selection tool, click once in the middle of the biggest section of the mask. Press Command-C to copy, then Command-F to paste in place. Open your Swatches palette and click on the single downward arrow at the top right to access the Flyout menu. Choose Open Swatch Library, Patterns, Decorative, Vonster Patterns. And then we'll choose Blazer. Now we'll add a little more attention to our mask by adding a bright spot behind it. Lock the title art layer and unlock the background layer. Use your selection tool to select the top image on the background layer, the pattern. With it selected, press Command 2 to lock it. Now click again to select the solid purple background. Open the color palette and change the CMYK build to 60-100-22-35. Open your swatches library and click the new swatch icon. Name the new swatch Bright Purple. Now open your gradient palette. I find it's easiest to pull the palette out separately from the rest of the panel so it stays visible when I'm accessing my swatches. In your swatches palette, drag the thumbnail of the dark purple swatch from the swatch palette to the far right side of the gradient slider. Then drag the thumbnail of the bright purple swatch to the left side of the slider. On the gradient panel, change the type to radial. Then select your gradient tool and draw from the center of the mask out past the edge of the artboard. Now we can lock the background layer again. And we'll create a new layer above everything else and name it Supporting Copy. Select your Type tool and click once at the bottom middle of the artboard just above the pink dotted line. Type 8, at symbol, 30, at symbol, 2016, couple of spaces, and Las Vegas. In the Swatches palette, change the fill color to white. In the Character Palette, change the font to Garden Grown Caps at 32 point. In our Paragraph Palette, we'll select Align Center.
Use the type tool to highlight the first at symbol. Use your eyedropper tool to sample the bright pink of one of the corner pieces. Now in your character palette, change the font to Ink Heart Ornaments at 46 point. This little sparkle will also be available in the freebie files. Use your type tool to select the pink sparkle, press Command C to copy, now highlight the second at sign, and press Command V to replace it with the copied sparkle. To make sure your event date and location is centered, select it with your selection tool, then click on Horizontal Align Center in the Align palette. I'll select your type tool. This time we'll draw a text box. Click and hold to the right of the mask handle and under Masquerade Ball. Drag to the right and down to create a text box. Type, join us for a night of debauchery and glorious costumes. In your character palette, change the font to Naive Lines Sans Bold at 24 point. Plus we'll change the tracking to negative 20 to tighten those letters a little bit. In the color palette, change the CMYK build to 0, 10, 100, 0. I'm also going to align to the left with my paragraph palette. And I'm going to add a few forced line breaks to get things nice and balanced. Let's follow the line of our mask handle for the left side of our copy. To do that, grab your direct selection tool, select the bottom left point of the text box, then hold shift and press your arrow right several times until the left side of the text box follows the same angle as the mask handle. Select your type tool again and click once to the left of the mask handle, but a little higher this time. Type $50 ticks, Mask required, costume encouraged. Use the eyedropper tool to sample the teal of the lace edge of the mask. If you sample the handle, you'll end up with a teal stroke and we wanna use the fill. In your character palette, change the font to Naive Line Sans Regular at 14 point. I'll just position that a little higher up for balance. And we're done. We have a bright modern take on a masquerade ball flyer using ornaments and fonts from this week's bundle, plus some of Illustrator's preloaded resources. Whether it's your outcome for this tutorial or something new, head over to our Facebook page and share it with us. Let us know what you think in the comments below and give us a thumbs up if you like the tutorial. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash design cuts to get more video tutorials and regular updates or visit us at designcuts.com. Thanks for watching. Till next time.